So I saw this render on ArtStation the other day and I thought this was a fantastic example of how simple hard surface objects can really be. You know, this is a probably one of the best representations of how you can take something as simple as a beveled box and create something truly unique. All you need is some basic modeling skills, some basic design skills, and you can have something truly unique without a lot of effort. Um, full credit to Ivan Santik, also known as a mother, for creating this. I thought it was a fantastic you know, render and design. We're gonna make something similar in this tutorial because I really want everyone to understand that you don't need to create some super complex mech to create cool stuff, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. Now, as always, I am going to be going, you know, somewhat quickly through this tutorial because, you know, I can't make every single tutorial beginner's tutorial. So if you are new to Blender, just grab our Jumpstart course over on our website. Over 70,000 students have went through it. You know, tons of people learning from that course. So if you are new, take that course first. It is free. Link in the description and um, you should be able to follow along pretty easily. So as always, I'm going to be using hard ops and box cutter for modeling because you know, life's too short to use vanilla blender. So we're gonna start with the cube. So let's add in our cube here. And the first thing I'd like to do here, scale this down a bit on the Z. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into edge mode here. Control Alt click on this edge, and it's gonna select all of them. All the vertical ones, we're gonna bevel those a little bit. Maybe scale this down a bit more. And let's just go ahead and Control A to apply scale just to avoid any issues. I'm also gonna go up here and maybe bevel this area. And then we can run a mirror with hard ops, Alt X, and go in that direction. And we're just gonna kind of move this around, see you know, where would be a good location for this. Maybe somewhere around here. And what's really important is I'll see a lot of people make shapes, but they don't consider you know, the proportions of the shape. You need to make sure you get in here and really think about you know, how you want the shape uh, or object to be at the end of the day. You don't want it to be too large unless that's what you're going for. So you know, maybe something around here could be good. Then we'll go ahead and let me just apply this mirror modifier. Control A, apply the scale again just to be safe. And we're looking good. Okay, so first thing I'd like to do is alt click here and alt shift click here. We're just gonna bevel, maybe to about there. And then we can just, um, you can either mirror with hard ops or if you have mesh machine, it's probably easier to just use the alt X command with that tool. It'll just be a little bit quicker than using the hard ops tool. So we kind of have something like this. I'm just gonna dissolve out this edge with control X. And now we just kind of have a basic shape here. We can right click to shade auto smooth and uh, yeah, this looks pretty good. All right, so I want to add some sort of, uh, you know, way to open this, right? Because if this is meant to be like a case or something, we want to open it. So obviously we want to add, uh, you know, whatever object or piece in here kind of opens it, right? So we're going to go in here. Let's add in another cube. And I'm going to show you a pretty cool solution to this. So I kind of want to have like a kind of imagine here we have like a button here in the middle I want to kind of have like a piece connecting to it uh, kind of adding a bit of you know area up here just for more visual interest so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go up here into vertex mode grab this on the X and hold control we'll snap it to about there and we're just gonna go in here and then control B maybe bevel like that and we can also add a mirror modifier and what I also need to do or yeah, actually, that is what I want to do. I want to go in here, move this down, and just kind of get that corner, this corner right here, roughly overlapping with this area, okay? Doesn't have to be perfect. Just try your best to kind of, you know, match it up. Something like that. And yeah, this should look pretty good. And then I just want to go in here and then bevel this. And we can just symmetrize that over. And that looks good to me. And now all we need to do we right click to shade auto smooth. We're going to fuse this object here to the main object. So select this, shift click this. We're going to run a union boolean. So Q, booleans, and then union. We can hide that. And then all we need to do is apply 
Uh, if it doesn't work, just go to exact in the modifiers panel, change it to exact, and then we can go here and apply it. And then we kind of have this object here. The topology is probably gonna be a mess here. Um, so, you know, basic stuff like this, you know, I will clean up. I'll just quickly press the three key with machine tools. If that doesn't work, you can just go in here for a limited dissolve. And then just set this to something like 0.1 and uh, you'll have something a little bit cleaner. So pretty easy. Now what I would like to have is a more natural fusion to the object. This is where bevels can become very powerful. So I'm going to go in here and then just bevel this with control B. It doesn't have to be a large one, but you can see how just by adding that, it kind of looks, let me show you, look at how much better this looks, right? So we're going to do that and then we can, you know, mirror again to the bottom. Just make sure the, I'm not going to make the bevel too large, but maybe something like that. There we go. And that should be good enough. Now we kind of have this cool, you know, indicative piece here in the front. Cool. So we can just kind of pan around here, see how this whole thing looks. I'm happy with it. And I do see a little bit of a shading issue right here. I'm not sure if you can see it with YouTube's compression, but very easy fix. Just go in here to add modifier. Blender people, why did you do this to the modifiers menu? This is so much more annoying to work with. Anyways, go here to edit and then weighted normal and uh, just turn on keep sharp and that should fix the problem. There we go. Yep, looks good to me. And then what we can do is maybe add some sort of button here in the front. So we'll just add in a cube. I'm gonna scale this cube down and just up a bit. Maybe to about there. And then we can apply the scale and move this back. And then I'll just get in here and kind of add in a chamfer. I don't want the edges to be all even, so I'm just gonna kind of keep it a little bit shorter. And we'll get in here and just do some quick symmetries. This is why we use add-ons, guys, because look at how quick I'm able to do these operations. Mirror here, bully in there, you know, it saves you a lot of time. So let's go in and run a difference boolean. Just something like that for right now. We can always add to this later and then Alt X and make sure this is turned on. The advanced menu, set this to the cursor. So we're mirroring over the 3D cursor right here and then just click it to mirror to the other side and shift to second collection uh, to hide the cutters there. And that should be good enough for right now. And one of my favorite techniques here, just to kind of, you know, echo some of the elements, bring in a little bit more visual interest because areas that are gonna have a lot of focus that are like predominant elements of the design, it's always good to, you know, bring viewers attention over to those areas. So you can always do some, you know, basic little design choices kind of like this, where maybe you add in, you know, just some sort of cool looking element kind of like this. It doesn't necessarily have to serve any purpose, um, but what it will do is bring the viewer's eyes a little bit closer to the areas of importance. So you can do something like that. And you can already see, you know, there's a lot more kind of cluster detail in there. And then maybe here in the back, just go into wireframe, move this back a little bit. Just bevel back there it doesn't really matter too much but just kind of an idea right and then if we want to add in a button very easy if we press Q and then ever scroll to recall that cutter all we need to do is press Q settings shift click on the shade solid and what that'll do is turn the cutter into a solid object and we could just kind of scale this in a bit obviously we can't see too much detail in there anymore but that's all right we can just add some sort of button like that and then just mirror it to the other side. I think we already have it, and there we go, looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and make sure we have a way to you know, actually open this thing, right? So I'm gonna do this non-destructively, just using a slice boolean. Uh, first of all, let me alt-click on this edge. Actually, before I do that, let me show you why I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna go here and add in a plane, and I'm gonna just extrude this plane up just uh, shift N, recalculate the normals, because sometimes, depending on the direction you extrude, you might have the normals in the wrong direction. So either direction, just make sure you press shift N, just in case. You can always turn this on if you want to, I just keep it turned off. And then shift click here, we're gonna run a slice operation. 
Now in this case, it actually looked like it worked fine, but sometimes when you have those overlapping, you know, pieces of geometry, it won't work. So in this case, it was all right, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and control X to dissolve that out just in case there's any issues. And let me just unhide this object. We'll run a slice operation and there we go. And then all I wanna do, sometimes for some reason the cavity turns off, just go back up here, turn on cavity for the edge highlight. And then we're just gonna select these two, Q and then bevel, press the N key to turn on the hard and normals and just make this a very slight bevel. If it doesn't pick up over here, no problem. Just press the A key, let's make sure we get both of them. Just press the A key to adjust the angle a bit, move your mouse. And okay, I know the reason this isn't working. This has to do with the way to normal keep sharp turned on. We're gonna turn that off. That still didn't work, interesting. Let me undo that and try it again. It must be some sort of weird thing. We press the N key. All I did was I removed the hard and normals. I don't know, or the way to normal. I don't really know what happened here exactly. Probably an obvious answer, but when I'm recording a tutorial, sometimes I just not fully with it but anyways we'll just remove that add in the bevel all I really need is a you know small bevel kind of like that and uh, yeah that looks good so now we basically have something that indicates this hatch can be open you know you press a button that opens and uh, this is really how simple things are guys the next thing I want to do is add in a little bit more you know excitement to this object it's a little bit dull very angular so you know you could always do something like let me dissolve this out real quick you could always do something like, you know, a bevel here on the top. You could do something like that, or you could even do a smaller chamfer and then add in a bevel that way. And maybe add in, you know, right click to mark sharp. And just kind of play with it, see, you know, what different design elements you like. Now, I personally think I'm gonna go for just a straight up bevel, kind of like that. I think it looks a bit more natural. And I'm just gonna do these both simultaneously. So the bottom and the top. And let me actually do these one at a time. So Control B, and then you can just copy this width, Control C. And then when you do it to the bottom one, you can just paste that in, Control V. So that way it's nice and even. Yeah, it looks pretty decent. Cool, so how about we add in a little bit, you know, less material here on the top. Maybe we could add in you know, a similar indentation. So let's go in, let me tab into face mode, select this face, and we can press Q, booleans, and then selection to boolean. And we just kind of move our mouse in a little bit. We click, we can just kind of move left and right. That looks good to me. And let's go ahead and apply the solidify modifier. And all I really need to do at this point is just maybe scale this in add in a little bit of visual interest. Hopefully not lose my voice today or my brain because of the way I am <laughs> seem to be communicating this video. Anyways, that looks kind of interesting actually. It's not too bad. We'll go ahead and ever scroll it and let's Alt X to mirror that to the bottom. And then same idea, Control minus or just run a difference boolean, doesn't really matter, same thing. We're gonna kind of get that same detail there on the bottom. And just by adding that in, now we have a little bit more, you know, visual interest, kind of, we're breaking into the empty space without breaking into the empty space. It's a weird concept, very intuitive feeling, but we added more detail without distracting from the main detail, which is pretty cool. Now, someone who's making like a physical object that's gonna be manufactured, you know, could go on tangents about, you know, this much material needs to be removed or, you know different design reasons. I'm just trying to make a fun tutorial for you guys So I'm not gonna go You know super technical with anything I just want to showcase some design choices I'm making and kind of explain why I'm doing that so I'm happy with this it looks good No complaints now eventually what I would like to do I'm not gonna do it right now, but I'll show you to see so you have an idea I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna add in a plane. I'm gonna rotate it and scale it up. Extrude, same idea. Eventually what I wanna do is add in a detail kind of like this on the top because what this is gonna do is it's gonna bring in 
some additional focus to this area. It'll also make it look a little bit more visually appealing, a bit more of a hard surface design, and just really bring all the focus in here while kind of breaking into the empty space a bit more. Um, not sure if I'll make this exact detail here, but I'm gonna do something along these lines. I just don't wanna do it yet because then it's just gonna split all these objects into separate pieces and it's gonna be a little bit annoying having to do operations to each piece you know, every single time. So I'm gonna try to avoid that for right now. Honestly, I could have done this one last as well, but not a big deal. Uh, let me quickly add in a way to normal modifier again. This time we don't need to turn on the keep sharp because we have bevels, so there's no need to keep it sharp. We'll go in here. By the way, this uh, save tool is with machine tools. You just gotta you know, enable it in the preferences. Just makes saving a little bit easier. You don't need to use it though. And machine tools is free, so you have no excuse to not get it. Um, but I think the higher tier versions, like 10 bucks, I'd just snatch the $10 version as well. Um, because you're going to be using these tools all the time anyways. So this looks good to me. We don't have to go, you know, super detailed on this either. We can just make some very basic, you know, additional elements in here and then kind of call it a day. And we could add in some additional tertiary elements. You could either do this with decals, which I always recommend, or if it's something a bit more physically engraved into the object, you could always just go with a physical detail. So I'm going to go in here. Rotate this cube 45 degrees, G, Y, Y. Kind of go in here, scale this up a bit. Control A to apply scale. And then I just want to go in, run a difference Boolean, and then just add in, you know, a bevel. We can create kind of a small detail like this. And then literally just mirror it to each side. Now if the mirror is oddly positioned, like in a direction, it's going on the local rotation. Since it's rotated 45 degrees, so will the mirror axis just change this here to global on the advanced settings. Again, that's Alt X, turn this on, change this to global, mirror, mirror, shift two, and then you're done. A little bit big for me, so I'm gonna scale this down. Still slightly too big. I just, if you have like too large of an object here, it's just going to overpower the main portion of the design. So you want to be careful. You don't want to do anything, you know, too distracting, I guess you could say. So that looks all right. It's not bad. It doesn't really have any heavy significance. It just looks cool. It kind of elevates the design a bit. And then Alt X again. And we just have to run a difference Boolean here on the bottom as well. Cool. So that looks good to me. And then, like I said, I want to add in some sort of detail here through the middle. So let me add in a plane. I can rotate that plane and then just extrude this. And we could maybe add in a slice operation. Or we could even do kind of like an outset detail. So what I'm going to do, let me delete this. How about instead I add in a, let's go into edit mode here. Now we're going to actually use a blender symmetry. I'll show you why. If I go to mesh and then symmetrize, and we're going to do the Y axis, it doesn't really matter which one, negative Y, positive, it doesn't matter because both sides are the same. But by doing that, you're going to see we have an edge here down the middle. That'll automatically kind of add in this detail here. Now before I do that, let me, let me undo that and apply which boolean is it? It's one of these. Let's apply this boolean. Otherwise, it's not going to, you know, cut all the way through. So we'll add, apply that boolean. That looks good. We can do the same thing down here. We just apply this boolean. Cool. And then same idea, mesh and then symmetrize. And then we can just go in, control B, add in a very, very small one segment bevel. Control C to copy that width, and then E to extrude, escape, and then Alt S. We'll kind of make like a outward design if you wanted to do that. And you could also just do a basic, you know, inward design if you wanted to have a little bit more physical kind of a separation there. It could be pretty cool. And another thing you could do just to save time is delete this bottom piece, Alt X this one, and then just call it a day but for some reason that's not 
lined up the way I'd expect it. So how about we just go in here, we'll do the same thing, symmetrize it, control B, and then just paste in that old width value, E to extrude, right click, and then Alt S, just kind of eyeball that one. And again, this is just going to be a render, so we don't need to stress too much about any you know, weird issues we have going on in here. But if that did bother you, if you needed to fix it for whatever reason, um, you know, you could always get in and apply this inner boolean, and then just get in here and you know, merge these back if you needed to. You might need to make the bevel a bit smaller, or perhaps move this face back so it's not overlapping. But again, we're not even going to see it for this particular render, so I'm not going to stress too much about it. So there we go, this looks pretty good. So at this point we can move into the textures and materials stage and also add in you know, some logos, some decals, uh, perhaps some trim sheets in there as well. Um, you could also even design the inside if you wanted to, but I don't wanna make this tutorial you know, a million hours plus, this could be a good challenge for you is to design kind of the inside portion if you wanted to do that. So let's go ahead and go into rendering mode. I'm going to use a different HDRI here. Now, if you have our Material Works plugin, we're going to be using that here shortly. Uh, you'll get access to six studio HDRIs, one of which I'm using here. This is very good for natural and realistic lighting. You'll see why in a second. Um, actually, I'll show you. Let me add in a plane. Move this down. We'll scale this up. Now, this is just the basic abandoned slipway lighting. And um, if we just go here, let me open up one of the studios, we'll just go in, maybe use the, let's go to the gun gradient one. This is a lot more natural and realistic lighting. This is kind of something you'd have in like a studio environment. But the best way to see this is with some, you know, actual materials here. So let me go ahead and control A, this plane. This plane is going to be very important just for, you know, basic rendering purposes. This thing needs to sit on something, it needs to have a floor. And of course, I'm going to be using Material Works. Now I just need to plug in my library real quick since this is a new Blender. You can purchase Material Works on our website at blenderbros.com um, and it just has a brand new update as well with full edgeware control and I'll show you that here in a second. Uh, so we're going to go in, we're going to add in maybe a floor. And we have a few different floors. We have, you know, the steel floor right here. So you could do something like this, a little bit reflective. You could always, you know, play with the slider if you needed to, drop the metallic, whatever. Um, we also have quite a few other floors you could use here. This is one of my favorites. It's kind of this, you know, interesting, like crosshair type of floor. And I'm just going to go into the transform menu and just rotate this 90 degrees, just so, or not 90, maybe like 45, and just add in a little bit of you know, dynamic elements to this. And if you're an orthographic view, it's going to look a little bit different. So just make sure you play with the rotation if you need to do that. But this looks pretty good. So maybe something around there. And then for the actual object, I'm going to add in some sort of plastic here. So maybe, you know, this ultra rough plastic could look pretty good. We'll add it to there. We'll add it to here and then also to the button. And if we scroll in, we have this really, really nice kind of bumpy effects, like an actual plastic. This is much better than a blender material because a blender material would be very boring with not much, you know, excitement going on. And now we kind of have like a much more natural set of maps there. So already this looks a lot better. Now I'm sure you probably want to add, you know, logos and cool stuff like that. We'll get to it. You know, don't worry yet. Uh, but the first thing I'd like to do is rotate this HDRI a bit more. Let me go into the shader editor. Uh, pretty soon we want to add this directly to the plugin so that way you can rotate it in there without having to go into the shader editor. But for now, you just have to go into the world tab in the shader editor and rotate it this way. It's not really a deal breaker. We'll implement that update at some point. But for right now, let's just find you know a good lighting position. I should probably turn that off. Doesn't have to be perfect right now either. We just kind of want to get in and just see, you know, which angle 
you know, kind of looks the best. This isn't too bad. Bit dark on the side, but we can easily fix that with a reflector. So let's close this for now. We can always adjust this again later. And I'm just gonna add in a plane, rotate this on the X 90 degrees, maybe a bit more. And then if we just move this back and rotate it a bit and scale it up, this will reflect some light back onto the object. So there's the before, there's the after. Just make sure you have a white plane. You can add a material and you can always play with the darkness if you need to, to kind of see you know, how dark you want that side to be. So maybe around here and there we go. And this is gonna look a little bit boring right now. Like admittedly, if we look at this scene, there's not too much going on. It's pretty boring, looks fake. You know, it doesn't look good. This is why wear and tear is so important. And this is also why we built this into material works. And you're gonna see why. Let's go here to the floor. We'll select the floor and click on the wear button. As a matter of fact, I don't need this floor to be super large. I just need it to be big enough to actually see the object here in the viewport, okay? And maybe move this back a little bit. Great, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the floor, click on the wear, actually apply the scale first, and then click on wear. And we could even make the scale here for these a little bit smaller. And if I go to this drop down under wear, what I can do is maybe add in some sort of smudges. You can't see too much right now. But if I add in these smudges and just kind of adjust the scale here, maybe adjust the strength, now we kind of have you know, some wear and tear and some smudges here on the floor. This is something you'd see you know, compared to a super clean floor like that. So we could add in some smudges, save the scene. We could also add in a layer of dust, just a very subtle layer of dust there. There's also a pretty cool one I'll show you. Let's go to Rust, and I'm gonna change this to the Rust version C. This is by far my favorite version. Here it is, and then what I can do is play with the scale. I'll do something like this, and then I can drop the strength. And now we have kind of this, you know, almost oil stained looking floor. It's absolutely insane. So um, I don't wanna remove everything, but if I maybe, let's add in, you know, a new material here and just kind of compare this to like a boring floor that you'd have in Blender with no texture, you know, it's a night and day difference. And that's why I'd really recommend, you know, utilizing, you know, tools like this when they're available. You know, when I started Blender, there were pretty much no tools like we have today available. So this is like the prime time to be getting into Blender for sure. Now, of course, we're gonna do the same thing to the actual object. This is arguably the most important one. So we're gonna go in here. And this is just an example, by the way, you don't, you know, perhaps you won't have like a stained floor for a scene like this, so just an example. I might actually, you know, get in here and make the strength even lower, just so it's not super dirty. So we're gonna go in here, we're gonna add in some wear and tear onto the object as well. Now, we actually have a setting here. If you turn on edge, it will constrain this detail to the edges only, as you can see. So I can drop the strength a little bit. What I can also do is increase the width around the edges and I can also increase the samples for more quality. Now I don't want the width to be too high, just something like that. Very, very low strength, because I don't even want this to be, you know, this is a plastic, it's not gonna rust. Just maybe a little bit of wear and tear there just to indicate, you know, something. You can't even tell what it is, that's kind of what I'm going for. Very, very low on this detail, it just needs to be subtle. And then I would definitely add in some fingerprints so we can go here to smudge. That looks good, and then just drop that. The smudges are by far my favorite ones because it just looks the most natural in my opinion. And now you kind of have you know these fingerprints and kind of stains and things like that on the object. And that's just a night and day difference on our scene already. You can kind of see that. So it looks pretty good. Um, and we do have, I think, other smudges in here to choose from. I'm not sure if I updated. Yeah, I did. So we can go in here and maybe choose like a different version. So this one right here, it's kind of like dirt and things like that. I'm gonna drop that significantly. I don't want it to be too heavy. Maybe like right around here is fine. Again, don't have to go too crazy with it. 
And there we go, already the scene is looking a heck of a lot better. Really like this. Now what I wanna do is introduce some decals and you know maybe trim sheets and things like that to make this thing look a bit more exciting. So you can use decal machine for this. So let me go in and use decal machine. Now we have a much larger pack of decals and trim sheets that work with decal machine. I know we have a you know subset of people that just want all our stuff, just want all the stuff we use basically. In that case, you can pick up the Academy program. Uh, otherwise, we do have a decal and trim pack available. Um, but even if you don't buy our trim pack, you definitely don't need to. You can at least use the stuff that comes with a decal machine. But if you want access to even more stuff, uh, pick up our pack. I mean, it took us literally months to develop all these decals and we have way more than what you see right here. Yeah, I think it took us close to a year to develop that whole pack. So definitely something worth getting. And I'm just gonna find some sort of cool, you know, logo here. I'll go in, kind of rotate this. I'm gonna scale it. Maybe put it here on the side. Just kind of eyeball it. Then if you want to drop, you know, the um, intensity of this thing, let me move it down a bit. What you can actually do is go in here, go to the materials panel, turn down the alpha a bit, put that to like 0.2, and then you can always get in and project the decal onto the object. For some reason, I get these Python errors. I think it's the some issue with my blender, not something you would run into, but it's still projected, so don't worry about that. And uh, yeah, there we go. So this is the scene so far. I haven't even added in a camera yet. How about we do that now? Shift A, camera, view, align view, align active camera to view. I'm not gonna make this camera perfectly orthographic, but maybe we could do, you know, 135 millimeter, which is almost like close enough to an orthographic that we would want and kind of zoom this in, reposition it. And we can always go in here and turn off the render region and just try to find you know a good spot to render this this thing looks really good i'm happy with that and we can kind of go around here and maybe we just add in some more decals here so perhaps there's a button on the front i could utilize I don't even know something like this All right this just saves us a lot of time for modeling that would otherwise you know take us way longer than necessary so i'm going to go in here and i also need to match the again i don't know why decal machines having a fit with me recently it's literally just this blender I, something's haunted with this blender but um it almost worked <laughs> let me try that again off camera there we go very very strange but I got it working somehow also if you need I'm just gonna slide this into the video if you need to nuke your blender just completely remove everything if you're having all sorts of bugs and weird issues and just strange behavior all around with blender it's probably time for a blender purge where you made a video on this like three years ago Watch that full video. You can't just uninstall and reinstall Blender. You have to go into the file structure, delete everything, uninstall, reset the computer, reinstall. And I do this once every six months or so. It takes you 10 to 20 minutes. It's not a long process, but if you have any weird issues you've been encountering or you think your Blender's haunted, do this process. I'll um, put it on the screen here and put a link in the description. Anyways, uh, I got that sorted. And this thing is looking pretty damn good. I like this. Maybe we could put something here in the top. Maybe just some sort of decal here. Again, I don't have my full decal library installed right now, but that's okay. Now I can always go in and reinstall those later off camera. I'm not gonna waste the time. But you know, I could go in here and add in one of these decals are actually <laughs> This is an old pack. I don't think this is even available to the public. This is just one we made years ago. I don't think it looks super interesting if I'm honest. But what I'm gonna do is go in here and drop that alpha a bit. This is 
not very good. Maybe something more triangular. I don't know, these could be kind of interesting. And then all I would need to do is drop the alpha. And you're gonna see it's kind of going over this cut right here, not a problem. Literally what I can do is just add in a cube, scale this cube down, kind of like that, and then just run a Boolean on it. It's not rocket science. You just get in here, you scale that up, literally run a Boolean on the decal. Yes, you can do that. It is definitely allowed. And now it's kind of cut through. So I don't know if I can show the before and after. Let me select it. See what I mean? This makes it look a little bit more you know, professional there. And this is still a bit heavy. So we'll put the alpha value down to like 0.1. So it's very, you know, very subtle. I don't know, nothing exciting, but it's something. And notice how just by using a little bit of textures, a little bit of good lighting, you know, something very basic like a reflector and just some wear and tear really elevates how this entire design looks. One of the things I hated most was having to render a really boring image, just super unexciting, nothing cool about it. And then I'd have to go into Photoshop and then I'd have to add in the wear and tear and the grunge manually. And then sometimes it would look fake. It was annoying. So, um, you know, fortunately, Material Works solves all of these problems, which is why I really recommend, you know, you pick it up. You know, it's our product, of course, but we made it for ourselves because we needed it. So we know it's good. But you can kind of see, you know, just how much better the scene looks when you have these types of things added to your objects. It's just a night and day difference. And this is what is important if you want, you know, a good design or good portfolio. Now, homework for you is if you want to keep expanding this design, feel free. Go in, add some more detail, maybe make an inside portion to it. Do whatever you want to do and um, kind of expand this model a bit, but I think I've shown you enough here. So now what I'm going to quickly do is render this, show you some very basic post-processing, kind of how I do that, and then uh, we'll kind of end it there. So to render this, I always render, if it's 16 by 9, I do 2560 by 1440 and then we'll just set this to um, actually this is all fine we don't need to do anything else all we need to do is go up here to render render image now once it's rendered this took me 40 seconds doesn't take very long if yours is taking long make sure you're rendering in cycles it should be an obvious and uh, just don't use EV like ever for renders and then device GPU compute and you can always go up here to system to enable your GPU. Even if you don't have a powerful GPU, it doesn't really matter. It's still gonna be a fast render. Like you can have a crappy computer and it's still gonna render within a couple minutes, okay? Just make sure your sample size isn't something insane, right? Just keep it keep it decent. You can copy my settings here if you want um, for render. It's like 300 max with denoise turned on. So again, um, just make sure you save that image Go up here to image and then save as and i'm going to save this to the desktop you can call this whatever you want i'll just call it image and then just save this as a tiff file 16-bit rgba is fine we click on save and then i'm just going to go into photoshop and do some very basic editing nothing crazy and i'll show you how i do that as well now people overcomplicate photoshop photoshop you don't need to use the advanced tools. I don't know how to use most of the advanced tools because I don't need to know. All you really need to do is take this layer, press Control J, so that way you have a backup. I do very basic post-processing work. All you need to do is spend five minutes and it's gonna you know, sometimes double the presentation quality of your work. It baffles me that people don't do this, even if it's not Photoshop. If you know how to do very basic edits and not overdo it, you'll have a much, much better result. So we're going to go up here to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, Alt to scroll out. And I just do very basic adjustments. I increase the exposure slightly if needed, which I'm doing here. Don't go too crazy on it. Like, you don't want to clip it. But, you know, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, whatever. And then we're going to go here. Clarity is always good. Don't be one of the guys that does this. Like, don't pump the sliders. That's not the point of them. 
do very basic adjustments. So maybe somewhere around 30 for clarity. And if you lift clarity, you also need to lift the shadows back up right around the same value. So we'll do, that's fine. Texture, be very careful with this if you're gonna play with it. I wouldn't go very high at all. I'd go like five or, yeah, five's fine. And maybe what we could do is, actually, I think this is okay. We'll click on okay. So again, before and after, before and after. Just see, it kind of gives it this nice pop. It kind of, it just looks better overall. You see what I mean? In terms of, you know, color balance and things like that, you could use tools like infinite color if you wanted to. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, you could always use like, um, I forget where it is. It's down here and it should be called um, color lookup, I think. You can use some of these kind of predefined LUTs. Some of these are good, and you can always drop the opacity if it's too heavy for you. Like, this is obviously heavy, but it could look cool with a very low opacity, so it's not super strong. So find one that you like, like this is okay, and just drop the opacity on it. You know, pump it just a little bit, to get a little bit of that effect that you like, and you can already kind of see it has that hint of detail that you have before. Let me just scroll through some more of these because usually there's some better ones here to work with. I don't like the ones that are super, you know, hazy. It just looks weird. So, you know, I could go in here and probably have my editor cut out this boring part. Right here is okay and just kind of drop the opacity a bit and just look at how much more this pops when you find you know the right type of you know slider and i didn't have to do too much here right this is a bit too heavy let's do 25 or 35 and there you go it's you know pretty basic and you could even get fancy in here Control alt shift e to combine everything together and add in like a small vignette this is just you know, probably outside of the 80-20 rule, but you know, a little bit of vignette here if you wanted to kind of darken around the edges a bit. But I think this original one's fine. Now, at this point, you could add in, you know, some text up here, maybe your name, maybe your company, your logo, things like that, and that's uh, all up to you because obviously yours is uh, different than mine. So that's about it. I hope this tutorial was useful. Now, if you want to pick up Material Works, you can grab this on our site. It's uh, on blenderbros.com. Material Works is probably, and this isn't me just saying it, Hard Ops and Box Cut are always number one. I'd rather you put money to that before you put it to our add-ons because those are the best. But after that, I would say either get Mesh Machine, depending on how much you model, and then get Material Works for the texture and aspect. And then everything else is kind of like optional. So. That's what I'd recommend doing, blenderbros.com if you want to pick that up. And of course, if you want to learn a bit more about hard surface modeling, again, blenderbros.com is the place to be. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope you learned a lot. And again, full credit to Mother for the initial design idea. I really wanted to show you guys how simple you know, these types of designs can really be. You don't have to create some complex mech to get cool portfolios, okay? That's it for today's video, and I'll see you in the next one.